All right, for this video, I want to go through a sample form 4797 for the 2023 tax year. And this is a sample 4797 that's going with an S corporation return, Form 1120S. So in our scenario here, we have a lawn care business in Florida, and they need to include the 4797 because they sold one of their mowers during the year, and they sold it at a gain. Now what's going to be unique about this is not only did they sell it for a gain, but it's going to comprise the ordinary depreciation recapture, and they're going to have a section 1231 gain for the excess. So we'll go through the full 4797 here with the rest of the return. I've also got the form instructions here for the 4797 as well. And then lastly, we've got one slide covering some background on the 4797 and some of these 1231 rules and then more details on the fact pattern itself. So when we talk about uh, business property, we're really looking at, is it 1245 or 1250 property? So th those are the most common ones. So 1245 is the sale of personal property. Uh, this is tangible or intangible property, stuff that is not real estate, versus 1250 property is real estate. Now, when we have property that was used in a trade or business and it was held for more than a year, if you sell that property, after accounting for the depreciation recapture, if any, you could potentially get Section 1231 treatment. Now, 1231 treatment is the best of both worlds here uh, because the gains are effectively long-term capital gains rates while any losses can get ordinary treatment. So that works out best for most taxpayers, right? If you have a loss, you want it to be ordinary because it can offset other ordinary income. But if you actually make some money on it and you have a gain, you want the lower preferential long-term rates. Now, when we have a gain that exceeds the depreciation recapture, that amount is gonna be the 1231 gain. And so that's what we're gonna have in our fact pattern here. So if we look at the fact pattern, we've got uh, this fake lawn care business, it's a Florida landscaping company, and the company purchased a quick track mower last year in February 2022 for 11300 So uh, for purposes of this example, we're going to assume that this is a really, really good price. So they got it heavily discounted on sale, and so they used that mower exclusively for business purposes, and then the company claimed 100% bonus, bonus appreciation in 2022. So they depreciated the entire cost of that mower, and so now its adjusted basis is zero. Then in June 2023, the company sold that mower for 12,300. So they sold it for $1,000 more than they actually bought it, right? So, you know, whether that's likely or not, right? A lot of <laughs> property depreciates, but in some cases you might be able to sell it and make some money, right? It just depends on how eager that buyer is. Now the adjusted basis was zero, so it means the, to the total gain on the sale of this is gonna be 12,300, right? We have the sale price that we got for it minus our adjusted basis, so 12,300 a gain. Now the depreciation recapture, which is the ordinary income is 11,300, right? And that's because we depreciated it. We took 11,300 of depreciation, bonus appreciation in 2022. And so the excess thousand dollars is gonna be that 1231 gain. All right, so let's have a look at the return and we'll see how all these numbers flow through, on, not just on the 4797, but we'll look at the rest of the 1120S. So if we start with part three, right? These are This is where you would report any gains from the disposition of these types of property. So we do have a gain on the sale of the property. So we've listed the mower up here, a JD Quick Track mower. The date acquired February 1st, 2022. Date sold was June 15th, 2023. And on line 20, we have the gross sale price. So what did we sell it to that buyer for? Uh, $12,300. Our original cost in the property was 11,300 and the amount of depreciation that we claimed last year was also 11,300, right? We got 100% bonus depreciation in 2022. So the adjusted basis here, subtract line 22 from line 21, we're left with a $0 basis, right? So it's been fully depreciated, we have no basis in the property anymore. So the total gain is gonna be the $12,300 figure. 
Now we are working with section 1245 property, right? So 1250 property is the real estate. And then there's a variety of others down here related to uh, farm equipment, IDC costs and the like, but those don't apply to us, right? So we're skipping over 26 through 29 and we're focusing on just uh, 1245 property here. So line 25A, it's asking us to enter the amount of depreciation allowed or allowable from line 22 so we're left with the $11,300 figure. And then on 25B, we enter the smaller of line 24 or 25A. So what are they getting at there? So the smaller one is the 11,300, but they're trying to figure how much of this uh, is going to be depreciation recapture, right? So our gain exceeds the amount of depreciation. So the depreciation recapture is limited to the amount of depreciation taken. And then the excess is gonna be our 1231. Now at the bottom here in the summary of gains, line 30, we enter the total gains for all the properties. So this is everything on line 24. So line 24 up here, total gains. We just have one property, right? So we have left columns B, C, and D empty. But the total gain is the 12,300. And then the, add the property columns A through D, lines 25B, 26G, 27C, and so on. So 25B is the $11,300 figure up here. So we enter 11,300. And then we subtract the two. And on line 32, we're left with $1,000. So a couple of items that have to be transferred to other places, right? So the 11,300 is entered on line 13 of the 4797. And then the $1,000 is entered on line six of the 4797. So if I scroll back up here to page one, we've got our line six entry here for $1,000, right? Sale or exchange of property held uh, more than a year using a trader business. That's gonna be the 1231 component. And then uh, in part two on line 13, we have the gain from line 31 on that second page, $11,300. Now, once we have these figures, where do they flow through to the return? Well, the 11,300, this is the depreciation recapture, which is just ordinary income, right? So that figure flows through to page one of the 1120S and it's listed here on line four. So our net gain or loss from 47.97 line 17 is $11,300. So the 11,300 just it gets included in here and so it's included in our net ordinary business income or loss. Now the second value, the $1,000, this is our 1231 gain. So this is a separately stated item on the K1. So if we look at schedule K, shareholders pro rata items, Line nine, net section 1231 gain or loss is $1,000. So the, the amounts that ultimately flow through to the shareholders, if we have a quick look at their a sample K1. So John Smith's K1 here, we have his allocation of net ordinary business income or loss. So this line includes that ordinary income depreciation recapture, but the section 1231 gain is a separately stated item on his K-1 down here on line nine, right? And so that's important because these are gonna be subject to different tax rates and they're gonna be subject to different netting rules, right? There's social rules about what kind of 1231 gains and losses can be net uh, on your form 1040. And so that has to be a separately stated item. All right, so uh, that covers it for this tutorial. I hope that was helpful. Uh, obviously, feel free to leave any questions below. I try to get to as many of those as I can. And as always, I appreciate you watching the video, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you.